here in New York. Little breezy. I don't think that will bother Hewitt. He's one of the cleanest ball strikers going around. That's his great strength, is the serve. And he will be aggressive. He'll keep coming. Gilles Muller, of that we can be certain. Leighton will, will want to improve upon his first serve percentage in the first round. So you look at the first three services already from Jules Muller. He's gone wide on the first court ace. He's gone straight at the body on the second court, unreturnable. And then he's gone down the middle with a swing serve, so, which is extremely smart when you're playing a, a returner of the ilk of Leighton. match in a nutshell isn't it we've just seen Muller with three great first serves tying Leighton up on return but if Leighton can get the ball back into play and just extend some of these rallies Muller may be even a little weaker off that forehand wing may be more prone to error off that side so that'll be Leighton's focus not to overplay just to make Muller play as many balls as possible Muller holds his serve in the opening game of this match. Leighton unable to extend any of the rallies on that occasion, but we expect him to get his eye in as this one goes on. Well, the good thing about this match here for Leighton is he knows exactly, there's no, he doesn't need to overthink the process. He, he knows exactly what's coming at him. He likes what comes at him. And uh, so it's a very comfortable tennis match for Leighton as far as in his mind and he doesn't have to you know, he doesn't have the big power hitting of, of some of the players that he comes up against now, whether he's got a combat. So he, he's going to be able to get on the front foot as much as possible here. Remembering the serve was his real downfall in his last round for, for quite a while. This would want to be a better part of his game. Baseline errors so far from Muller have been off the backhand side. He wouldn't want to be extending the rallies as he did there. Yes. You can already see him pitch a Wally. It's, we're only, we're only we're five minutes into this match, but just the difference in movement is Muller is not. For a big man, he's not. There are a lot better movers than, than him on the tour. Feeling Leighton just serving within himself. He will focus on a high percentage of first serves in. Doesn't want to give Muller a look at too many second serves. Muller, of course, does like that chip charge play. Take the second serve on the rise and get in quickly behind it and just build pressure over time. One all. And that'll improve his service action for sure. Definitely that he's actually not reaching and searching and trying to find that extra little bit off his serve to actually gain a free point. So. That's a positive playing, another positive playing, Jules Muller. 
<laughs> nice serve. That's can't come back that ball. That's it. That's just that's good. Too good every day of the week. And you can see it actually swinging away. So it hits the court and it's swinging away. So that's a great advantage that Muller has. He gets a lot of movement through the air. This is what I feel is going to happen as this match progresses. Once Leighton starts to read the serve, there's very few better returners, particularly off that backhand wing. Remember that 2001 US Open final, he absolutely took Sampras' serve apart. I mean, I think Leighton at that time was the best returner in the game, bar none. Turn, isn't it? That, I mean, good serve that one into the body for Jules Muller. Oh, I would be using that a lot against Leighton. Leighton's not as not as nimble with the balls in and around him as he used to be, so it can tie him up. from both players there, a couple of miss hits there. The first one was from Muller, didn't put that short ball away, and then Leighton actually had a purchase on it, and normally he'd come up with something quite good while. I think he was surprised in the end by how much time he had. Muller with the short forehand there, really should have put that away. 40-30. Another comfortable game for Gilles Muller. On serve with a 2-1 lead here in the first set. Pretty warm conditions here in New York today. And Roger, I just want to pose this question to you. Leighton Hewitt with the bright orange. Yes. Gilles Muller, the white shirt. Does it make a difference to wear a colour, those darker colours on a day like today? 32 degrees here oh, in New York. Well, definitely. Um, I don't think the orange is going to do a lot, but if you get into that darker range of navy blue, black, but this is the orange, but you'd be going the white. Loves to pass cross court late and off both wings. But I suppose the, the manufacturers pretty much tell them they what dictate. to wear for the duration of the tournament. Dictate the terms. You see here, Leighton's got plenty of time. He reads where that forehand's going as well. The one that gets me is when someone wears the black cap, mm. which is staggering during warm conditions. <laughs> I just feel like everything today, everything about today, conditions included, go towards the side of Leighton. They just lean towards the side of Leighton. I like that play too. Take the net away from Muller. Just has to do it enough. Doesn't have to overplay his hand. Muller has a, he can ch he chips that ball back, but he doesn't have he doesn't have the feel of that ball that he actually can that he can drop it in front of Leighton. Actually comes up at him. Thank you. 
Slight mishit from Muller. Leighton draws level at two all, and you still get the feeling that both players still in a bit of a testing out period here. Leighton not really opening the shoulders on any of his ground shots yet, just playing very much within himself. Just moving the little pawn on the chessboard, aren't they? Yeah. Just finding. Wally, you, you look at Muller and the way he wants the players to come forward all the try and come forward all the time, but the one thing we must explain, it's, it's such a power movement to be able to, to explode, come forward, prop, stop, and continually do that on the returning games. He does it on his serve, so he's going to double up and do that on the returning games. That it's quite fatiguing, isn't it? I guess that's a trap you can fall into too because he doesn't overly respect the ground shots of Muller. He knows that uh, Muller's obviously a very capable professional player. He can keep the ball alive, but he, he's not going to smash the ball from the back of the court. So Leighton really, he, he has to play with a fair amount of aggression. He can't play too safe. Well, I would think you'd also want to move Muller as much as possible firmly across the back of the court. As I said, he's not the best tall mover that's on the tour. It's about 6-3, Muller. 6-3, 6-4. But there's, there's guys that are above him. Sam Query, I think, is a little, a little bit better than him. John Isner, I think, is a better mover at 6-10. Great rhythm on the serve. How much... Real estate, did you give, did you give the left-hander Wally when you played him out of your normal position to the serving to the right-hander? We'll be able to talk about that after this game, but let's give you a little bit of time to remember. Just swings that one into the right hip of Hewitt. So once again, Gilles Muller pretty good with that first serve. And after 13 minutes, he leads by three games to two. I guess as the match emerges, you calculate where you're being burnt the most. If it's body serve, maybe you just move back a foot or two to create a bit more space. If he's that T slide is getting you, you definitely lean that way. And if you get to a big point, I think you put yourself in a position where you make him serve his least favourite serve. It's interesting these days because players, there's so many double-handers on the tour and they just return so well with those double-handed backhands. And I guess when I played, there was a lot more single-handers, so people would try to cover their backhand to a degree. So the returner moved around it a lot more than they do today. Okay, now here's trouble. Love 15. Muller gets a look at a second serve. Get the feeling he might come in. Good play, that ball just sits there. That was right in the slot. It was an easy delivery for the person playing the way Muller wants to. I think Le Leighton's playing very safely at yeah. the moment, and that he just has to find the, the, the balance between getting a lot of balls back into play, but with enough weight. Well, the one thing Muller can do, he can strike the ball, so he can actually hit, he can hit a clean, cold winner when he steps forward towards the action, towards the net. So you can't discount what he, the damage that he can do from both wings. Wow, that was that hit the side of the racket. I think Leighton's feeling a bit of tension. Sure. And he certainly did against Kumke to a degree in that first set, in the first round. Three great points for Muller. Oh. 
Oh, once again. Leighton just a little tentative with the feet. No racket head speed, and Jules Muller draws first blood. A, a really poor game, really, from Leighton, unfortunately. Muller did play that one cracking backhand return, so Leighton goes down the early break. And Wally, you know, we must we must tell our viewers that Jules Muller can play the game. He's no he's no dummy. Um, I mean, he's back here. He beat in 2005. He defeated the man who's retiring after this event, Andy Roddick, out on Arthur Ashe Court night session. Huge crowd. And I remember that match. And he just served extremely well and, and volleyed well. And, and, you know, he just forced his opponent like he's, he's doing now against uh, Leighton. But Leighton doesn't have the luxury of having a big serve that can actually buy him some free points. So he's... When you play somebody like a Muller or, or a player that could be potentially slightly injured, someone like Leighton, the temptation is just to play safe, just get the ball back. But then you're not really asking any questions of that player, as you suggested, you've really got to get Muller to hit the ball on the run. So I'm guessing Leighton's, he's just a little bit tentative. I mean, he's obviously 125 in the world. This is not the Leighton of four or five years ago. He has to find his way into this match. And Muller's doing a pretty good job too of mixing up that first serve, keeping Leighton off balance. 121 miles an hour, so not not huge, but he's got good, uh, as you said, the direction's very good from him. He held there, Muller. Held his ground. He's now someone who comes to the, you watch him here, Muller. Holds, 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 waits, and then goes. So he was almost he was teasing Leighton to hit that ball down the line. Good coverage. Jill's Muller. Serving beautifully and travelling very nicely in this first set. He certainly has settled into the match now and he leads 5 2. Funny when the body carries a bit of tension, the first thing that suffers is the footwork, and then of course you're not in the best possible position. You kind of wait for the ball to come to you. Then the arm is tense, the shoulder, there's no real racket head speed. Already that double fisted backhand had a bit more venom, a bit more depth. And sometimes when you're down a break, you sort of shrug your shoulders, the worst things happen, you're down the break, okay. I'm in a bad position and then that can actually be the catalyst for you to loosen up. Serving from Hewitt. Well, now get the opportunity to close the first set out with this. So when you worked with Leighton all those years, Roger, 
would you describe him prior to a match as being an, a nervous athlete or yeah i think he's a little bit on edge but I, but i think he was on that competitive edge he was um there there are times i felt like leighton was more nervous against the lower ranked player which was you'd think strange but When he was playing the big matches, it was it was almost like he was a natural calm about him. It was, it was just about excitement of the clash that he's about to sort of step onto a centre court with big crowd and just bring his tennis there. But it, you put him against a lower rank player who's about 70, 80, and he definitely plays a little secure. In, sorry, not secure, a little safe. Because I used to try and tell him to just put the hammer down and just. His mentality, that's a great shot there actually, but from Bills Muller pulling the trigger down the line, but his Bates mentality was, why would I go for so much? You can see here, Muller, he's holding, he's just sitting there. So he's right behind the ball, planted behind the ball. It's easier than it first looked. Leighton's mentality was, why do I need to go for anything outrageous or anything aggressive or use the full court? Because shouldn't I be able to just beat them consistently over time through a longer rally? Worked against him, against him a lot of times. That's a great serve, just taking a little bit of pace off, letting the spin do the work. He's got full command of the server square, hasn't he, Jules Muller? That's yeah. what makes it such a great uh, serve. There is a little update. Lee Na, the number nine seed, is in trouble against Laura Robson. Down a break now in the third. Of course, Laura Robson <laughs> took care of Kim Kleisters in the previous round, so she's enjoying a real purple patch. Well, you'd rather Laura Robson get through that because you wouldn't think Laura Robson could go Kim Class, Kim Kleiss's, Lee Nah, Sam Stoes. No. You wouldn't think so. Only 18 years of age. Yeah, no fear. No. Forty love now. Three set points for Gilles Muller. Plenty of kick on that second serve. Tough when you face the lefty and they kick the ball. The spin is going away from you, so you've really got to, got to let a, get a lot of racket head speed to cover that spin. Too good, Gilles Muller. He has really settled in a lot quicker than Leighton Hewitt in this match. So he takes the first set, six games to three. Drive a Volvo and you'll experience more than just comfort. You'll experience 100% luxury. Turbocharged power and all-wheel drive don't just promise acceleration. They give you 100% performance. And when it comes to styling, you'll experience the beauty of 100% Scandinavian design. So when it comes to finance, Volvo now offer an unprecedented 1.8% per annum across the entire range. Hurry into your Volvo dealer today. Step into a world where you'll find new ways to explore and new ways to stay in touch. The future is now in your hands with the new smart TV from Samsung. The HTC One with amazing camera and Beats Audio. Now available in a new colour and with blazing fast 4G. Exclusively at Telstra. With up to 242 kilowatts of power and one of the best handling chassis in its class, the Volvo S60 has made the perfect platform for a race car that has won the World Challenge GT Championship. But best of all, it can now be yours in a take-home version. And for a limited time, the Volvo S60 is available with 1.8% per annum finance, plus three years or 100,000 kilometres free scheduled servicing. Visit your Volvo dealer today. We salute courage and your sacrifice.
The Hunger Games. Rented now on Foxtel, on demand and box office. Six games to three. Leighton's just got to find a bit of electricity. He's one of the most, at his best, he was one of the most elect electric athletes in the game. He was so dynamic on the court. And uh, we haven't seen any energy, any fire. We haven't heard the feet on the court. No. And I think he, he's just got to accelerate his involvement in this match. Well, and also, let's face it, Wally, Jules Muller hasn't. I mean, he's going to serve like he has. That's, just, that's normal. There's nothing out of the box with Jules Muller's serve. Leighton played a horrendous game yes. to give it to give him the break. And that's that's the bottom line. It was a really soft tennis game. But Leighton, he's so well within himself at the moment. That's the closest ball he's hit to the line in 30 minutes. He'll respond because this is what he this is the beauty of of his mind, he'll respond. He'll 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 take this challenge. He needs to. Good tennis. Leighton did a lot of work there across the back of the court. Then he actually hit a backhand, which got him back into the point. But Jules Muller, to his credit, used the lines, and that's how he makes his way forward. And he's very comfortable at the net there with a volley. He's prepared to hit about seven or eight shots, isn't he, Jules Muller, to set up? He's he, striking the ball very well. That five-setter against Usen has played him into some sort of form. To me, watching Leighton here, and I know it's not the case, but it looks like his strings are too loose and he doesn't trust the hit. That's what it looks like. A little bit more on at that half volley. Well, the, the damage was done when he came in and played that four, and he rolled that. that got, got, he was defending there, covering the court well, but he was always going to get opened up eventually, purely because that approach on the four, off the forehand side just went up and down. Too much time for Jules Muller to set that attack up. Big point here, well, needs to. Yeah, he's got to keep his nose in front in this second set. Absolutely. Muller is growing in confidence. Sure if he, was so he was trying to get that that close to the to the baseline there. No, and Roger, confirmation. Uh, it's it's over 31 degrees now, so the ball is going to start to fly through the air a little more, and that will bring in the heat rule for the women's event. They'll get a break after the second and third sets if they choose. No Hawkeye out here on court 11. Leighton had a bit of a look at that. Yes. Obviously no value in stopping the point, so he had to wear the call. See how they're illustrating how tough it is when the return goes back to the feet of the server, just to get any purchase and 
back on that ball. Pressure starting to build. Muller hitting the ball very cleanly. Had a yeah, bit and he's of trouble on a couple of balls sharply into the forehand, but outside of that, he's been good. And he's on late and serve as well. It's almost like he knows, especially on the second serve, he's been able to lean and just cover this second serve. Has gone to the backhand. First come on, albeit a subdued one. But that's what we want to see from Leighton. Just a bit of fire. Needs to really impose himself yes. now in this match. I mean, he's the he's the man with the reputation. Muller would be acutely aware of that. He's just been a bit withdrawn so far in this match, Leighton. This might do him the world of good to get out of this game. Again, that ball was wrapped around the frame. So on two occasions, three double faults. Needs a quality first serve here. Let's see again whether he leans Muller into the backhand side with the serve. Come on! Here we go. Just needs to fire up, up a little bit. Maybe the crowd will yes. become a bit more involved here for Leighton Hewitt. He's a funny character. Sometimes he can feed off an individual in the crowd that's giving him a bit of love. Juice number or three. Or the opposite. Yeah, he can fire up if someone antagonises him. Starting to use the court. Well, that's the finish there, but the backhand did the did the damage. Yet again for Muller, Leighton had an opportunity there with a shortish forehand, went the wrong way. Just not quite on song. Today, Lake Hewitt, unfortunately, that's five double faults already in this match, and, and once again he gifts the break to Gilles Muller, 
who leads one lap in the second set. Now, out on Louis Armstrong Stadium, another big upset. Laura Robson, the giant killer, the teenager from Great Britain. What is going on in British sport? They are enjoying a real purple patch. So, we know the number nine seat is gone. And Laura Robson, just have a look at the crowd. She has generated a lot of interest. Obviously, after her win against Kim Clijsters, lovely girl, a lefty, a great ball striker. And it's all coming together for her. Of course, that is Sam Stoza's next opponent. And I think Sam would be quietly happy that uh, Lee Na is gone. Another winner for Muller there off the forehand. Oh, look, I think she'll be ecstatic, to be perfectly honest. You know, I, just, I just feel like match after match, eventually it's going to do a little bit of wear and tear. Yes, she's 18. Laura Robson, so she's youthful, she's just loving the moment, but eventually it can catch it, it'll catch up with it. Maybe not, she might go through. She might continually just continue. This might be a breakout event, well it is so far. So Leighton missed that ball, but it was, it's just much more aggressive. The racket head was flying, there was some genuine pace on the shot. And I think that's the way forward for him. I think maybe he underestimated just how well Muller is hitting the ball. He's been a little safe throughout. And he's carrying tension, there's no doubt about that. I think the five double faults illustrate that. Might as well take a few big swings and try to free up. Just, just as you said, well, it's the last couple. And it just sort of really, you're right, it just releases you a little bit. And Muller, he's got no hesitation, has he? To go for the lines, he's got the comfort now of that set and a break lead. Well, he's also, while he spent because he spent his whole career trying to navigate his way forward to, to get a comfortable first volley, they do have to press the lines, these guys, because they've got to ex exploit their opponent and stretch them wide so they get an off-pace ball. So they're more, they're common areas of hitting exactly where we saw there. They don't mind at all, as, as you said, going for the lines. I miss a few, but very dangerous when they make them. making his intentions obvious. Anytime he's set, he's now got the break. He's going to take a chance, but Hewitt holds serve. Muller leading 2-1, second set. Tough situation now for Leighton Hewitt. Dropped the first set, 6-3, trails 2-1. He's going to break in the second. Muller is serving well. Conditions are hot. Talking about temperatures over 31 degrees, so the ball is, is fizzing around through the air. We thought that might help Leighton, but Muller's serve is uh, very accurate varied too, so late having a tough time getting into these returning games. Well, Muller serving at 68% for the match, 50% this set.
Adam mentioned at the uh, Adam Peacock at the end of that first set. He just mentioned that the bounce, the height that uh, Muller is getting off the court on his second serve, and that was, certainly was evident there. Leighton had really backed up a long way to try to deal with it. Yeah, that, that is a it was a very good return and for Muller to actually come and play this ball here what's this with that chip that well all they had to do is slightly miss it that, that's a it's a great shot but I think it's the sort of shot that's made a little easier with the scoreboard Four miles an hour, that's just under 200 kilometers. Not enormous, but his variety of serve has been exceptional so far throughout the course of this match. have to describe this as a half chance given how well Muller has served so far in this match. 30 all now for Hewitt. Muller has not served to any particular pattern. Mixed it up beautifully. Leighton will have to fight hard to get this first serve back into play. Set up, isn't it? You can see what Muller does. It's pretty, it's very noticeable to, to see what he does off the back of the court. He gets, if he gets the first ball, say he went to the backhand side on the first one, wasn't quite wide enough. Then he, if he gets it slightly wider, then he's, then his next shot coming back would definitely go into the open court and he'll come in. So he's just trying to extend his opponent with width. And then when he's got a real big gap to go into, he'll make his way forward. So the approaches forward are very calculated. Extremely well. It's funny how it works when things aren't going your way. Leighton hit a net cord in this game and just sat up beautifully for Muller. His net cord, in contrast, put Hewitt in a difficult position. But that's the shot of a, a relaxed man, isn't it? Nice drop shot, no hesitation there. Not known for his touch and guile around the net, Muller, but he certainly showed us plenty of that in that particular game. He holds serve, 3-1 lead now for Muller in the second set. Important for Leighton just to stay tight here. Presence of mind from Leighton. It's been a winning play for him. The serve volley point may help with the rhythm of his serve too. The fact that he's going up after the ball. 30-15. Well, of course, he 
saved match points in his first round. He was down two sets love against Usni. So whilst we suspect that that might have taken a bit out of him physically, it certainly does wonders for your confidence, that sort of a situation. And when he did make the quarterfinals back here in 2008, twice en route to that quarterfinals, he came back from two sets love down. Hewitt hold serve. Still trails by a break in this second set. The man from Luxembourg leads by a set and three games to two. So when you, I think the champions, I'll, I agree the champions should be able to retire and just leave the game when they feel like it. We saw Andy Roddick yesterday announcing that. And his, I think main thing was enthusiasm, the ability to not perform now at his best. there of the Hewitt of old turning defense into attack and the feet on the backhand approach all of a sudden the feet kick into gear and he becomes a much more dangerous player there's Beck got a concerned look on her face Gee, that's a great volley. It was a good return from Lake. Lake would have thought he was going to get a, an opportunity to pass for sure. But that volley was, you can see their net points won 71%, so great statistic for Muller. That volley, fi volley finding the line. So the ball really moving through the air and moving off the court for Muller. That's a brilliant serve right there, incredible accuracy. Just serving within himself, but the rhythm is perfect. That's 126 miles an hour with no effort whatsoever. Just a really languid, fluid service motion. Well, you think, well, his, his biggest serve so far is 129, so it's not massive. I'm sure he's got a lot more, he's got a bit more to offer than that. I'm sure he's in the 130s somewhere. Two, four. there needing the first serve late can I go back to the the Roddick announcement did you see that as like a smart thing for, for Andy he just saw the next phase of his life he thought you know what I'm just not going to be there day in day out it's a very personal thing isn't it really yeah. when when does a, a great champion retire or a former Grand Slam winner and I suppose if you're really enjoying the process the hard work off the court the travel the competition you're going to be inspired to keep going. I think for Leighton, I guess he feels he's been so cruel by injuries over the last three to four years. 
and his ranking is 125, he just knows he's a lot better than that. So he's still motivated to go out on his terms, to be fit and healthy, to have a good full year on the tour and then see exactly where he's at. More fight there on the first serve. Serving primarily to Muller's backhand on that forehand wing. The forehand court, 30-15. Roger, I think a bit of a problem for Leighton in this match has been his his second serve. It, it's yeah. one directional, isn't it? I mean, basically, exactly. he's just come around the side of the ball and cut it into Muller's backhand, and Muller's read that pretty well. So if the first serve doesn't go in... <laughs> Muller's able to control the court. He's got a fair idea where the serve is going. And again, you can see there when Muller gets that short ball, there's no panic. He just guides it in there, gives himself a bit of time by giving that ball a bit of air just to get court position. So he's a very relaxed tennis player. He's playing with great control. Some better serving there from Hewitt. Still in trouble on the scoreboard. He's lost the first set 6-3 and trails by 4-3 in the second set. Just missing there, but again, I'm just there upset about the net call that uh, Muller hit. But what a great first time Muller's come in of a bit of a, uh, what I would say like a panic approach, where he just hit the ball in the, in the middle of the middle of the forehand region, but played a very controlled volley to give him some time and positioning. That's incredible, isn't it? I mean, he's basically hit both lines. But not only that, look at, we'll get to see the angle of this, hopefully, off, off a replay. No, he won't. Leighton did well to get it back, and then he hits the line on the far side yeah. of the court. Short, not the line. Very is... measured performance here from Muller. I'm surprised. I just thought he'd make more errors. I thought Leighton would be able to force him into more error. only consolation here is that he can play a lot better, yeah. Muller cannot. He's at the limit of his abilities. But I think we, we also spoke, Wally, it's about the weight of the ball. So if Leighton Ball's got, if it's, there's not enough going coming off his racket and he's not pressing, Muller's got a lot of time to put himself in his positioning. But but Muller's stats, they're great. I mean, he's hit 21 winners and he's made 11 errors. I would have thought the reverse might be true. First time he's gone for a, a different serve. So the first point he comes in off the a shot that he hasn't done for the whole for the whole match so far. That one there was a wild, big wild second serve. So and Leighton will take that all in. He digest all that. Knows there's a little bit of tension here. Muller's close to he's, he can see two sets to love. Point. Muller knows that you can see that he doesn't give much away with his body language. Muller, there was the fist pump there, and he's used that swinger down the tee so well. So the variation there at 128 miles an hour, that's pretty impressive. 
out to the forehand. It's too good. Just when you get the feeling maybe some uh, pressure was about to be applied, applied two huge first serves. And uh, you can see the match clock there, one hour and four minutes, and Muller, a game away from a two sets to love lead. And both those serves there not, not going the way that the natural left hander would, would serve, generally under pressure where they'd use their swing serve. The, the one on the juice court went out wide, that one that went through the middle. Well, if you're more, that's another let call there. It's like not happy again with that. But if you're Muller, you're really trying to apply some heat now because if you can break and surf first start of the third, so Leighton uh, going to be hungry here to hold the service game. really gone against him hasn't it Wally today's serve serving at f just under 50 percent but the six double faults from Hewitt and that might be what is needed. Muller's proven to be very difficult to pass. <laughs> he just fires that one straight. Look at Muller's reaction. Yeah, I'll just turn around and go. That was a great shot. I mean, absolutely legitimate when you've got a man who's six foot four perched on top of the net. The big point too. 30 off. You're probably going to say the same thing, Wally. The second serve is going in both slots in the backhand slot on the first court and second court. And Muller's just leaning. It's leaning across there and just gets behind it. And it's a, it's a pretty simple shot for him. Set point. Muller, second serve. Great pass. Once again, the pressure being applied from Muller. Second serve a little short, inviting Muller in. That is his favourite pass, the cross-court forehand. hit Muller. Very measured performance. <laughs> Just not enough on the first serve. Lacking a little accuracy too, 102 miles an hour there, that first serve. 164 Ks back in our language. Yeah. <laughs> I've just seen a couple of indications. There was that slice backhand that missed out of the middle of the racket, missed by about three feet. That was 
a little bit of a deceleration. There was a big double fault in the previous game. So I've just seen a couple of indications that he's feeling some pressure. So it'd be huge if Leighton could make him serve this out. long. So Leighton has saved a set point. Still in this second set, but after the break, Muller will serve for it. He leads five games to four. Leighton has yet to generate a break point. come on with a bit of conviction we can see once the first serve misses especially on that first court is real opportunity and, and he played a couple of aggressive hits too he actually hit the, hit the ball with a bit more venom crowd got more involved see the response from Muller Body. He has varied his serves so well. In the last game, it was 30 all. Two big serves out to the forehand. There, a tough situation at Love 15. He curls it into the right hip. But he also had the he had the confidence to go body because if you get it wrong, it's just a it's a can, can be a comfortable return for the opposition. So he's very confident in his own mind where he's actually going to hit, land the ball in the service box. Not by much. A little block here from Leighton. Just getting the ball low enough. He had to volley up. Went for a little bit extra Muller. Pushed it long. Muller. There was a little indication in the previous game that a bit of tension was creeping in. Confirmation that there is tension. Gilles Muller coming up with a double fault. It's only his second for the match. And it was a little wild. So Leighton Hewitt out of nowhere, as I mentioned prior to this game, he had not generated a single break point. Stands at 15.40. it a little more animated at the back of the court now Hewitt just pumping himself up wow he has really struggled so far today Leighton Hewitt but he's a champion we know that and he just finds a little something extra and Jill's I don't know whether that was a bad bounce or whether it half an eye on Hewitt frames that final ball and there's the reaction it's been a while coming been a very subdued Leighton Hewitt thus far Maybe now this will sting him into action. As I mentioned, he can only get better. I don't uh, think Gilles Muller has got another gear to go to. Five all.
wide. Good signs there. A few errors from Miller. And don't you think, Roger, that that break came about purely because of reputation? The yeah. way that both men were playing, there was no reason for Miller to, no, to right. get tense, but the reputation of Hewitt is such. Leighton's not. It's a, it's a great shot there. Leighton's racket speed's got a little quicker, so a little bit more pace because of the adrenaline that's now coming out of his body. And when he gets a little roll like this, he generally can carry it on for for quite a while. He can run with it. He milks it. He starts working it within within himself. Shot there of Leighton Hewitt's wife, Beck. Feeling a bit better about things all of a sudden. 30 love. <laughs> Tough when you drag in the court. So Leighton was, he moved up inside the baseline here. If you go cross court, then you've got to retreat. And you are vulnerable down the line. So he may have been better himself just to pull the trigger down the line. Hewitt on that forehand. The problem is the 79 miles an hour is one thing, but he's not hitting it with kick. There's no, no, there's no bite on the ball, so it's coming in at, at a pretty nice height for Muller. Good effort from Leighton actually put himself in that position. That was a good shot. This was a good shot. Didn't quite get the depth there because he's on the full stretch. Very calm face, isn't he? He is, yeah. Well, I mean, he's just just throwing away the second set. I mean, he's still, it's not gone yet, but he had it in the palm of his hand. His coach would be pleased with this game, wouldn't he? Yeah. The fact that he's bounced straight back, Muller. Now, Leighton unloads on a first serve. We haven't seen too much of that from him today. 117 miles an hour. And this, I think, is what he's got to do. He's got to really step up and try to win this set now. That would be a real blow to Muller. He's thrown everything that he's got at Hewitt. And to be standing at a set all, I think, would hurt him. Doesn't normally miss that uh, pass though, Leighton. It normally makes that's a bread and butter pass from as well. So that went long by a long way. But second serve doing the damage there again, right in the moving space of Muller. that serve got up a bit higher but that's what we want to see from Leighton taking the line on using the court look at the racket head speed there racket head fizzing through the ball it's 
funny too how racket head speed can give you control. Hewitt, his fighting instincts come to the fore. He's taken the last three games on the trot. His wife is happy. The crowd are starting to applaud. Hewitt is finding a way back into this match. He leads 6-5, second set. Phil Muller has gotten a little tight. There's no doubt about that. Can Hewitt navigate his way through this second set? Now, this is a really pivotal set in this match. There's no doubt about that. Well, more so. Well, obviously for Leighton, if he went down to this love, but but for Muller, if he if one set all, it's net just extends that match. A bit of fatigue will eventually come in. And and it'll be a lot of it, there'll be some mental fatigue as well because he, he was coming off he was coming off a quality level, having things under control. Just starting to see a few more errors from Muller at the back end of this set. He was almost flawless for a set and a half. His execution was perfect, really measured, controlled tennis, very accurate. We felt that Leighton was a little tentative, he wasn't putting enough pressure on Muller, and Muller was in full control, but now the forehand just starting to miss. Slow movement, very, very slow movement. That ball jumped up at Leighton. Leighton was able to get some depth on the on the return, but Muller just watched it, and then just late the last minute he gets around it and pushes that ball wide. So he's definitely feeling he's having a flat moment. Good effort from Leighton. Look at this, out of nowhere. And the first signs of negativity from Gilles Muller, just shaking his head at his coach. He cannot believe it. Absolutely in the driver's seat. And he knows to let Hewitt back in. How disastrous that would be. I mean, that is only going to get better. Get ready for large. Come on, do you? Could even be a little vamos. All right, second serve. Two set points for Hewitt to draw level at a set apiece. Oh. Good aggression from Muller. He got on the front foot. He didn't hesitate. I mean, he's missed a few forehands of late, but backed himself. Right, he'll be annoyed at that. He was in the rally. I think he thought Muller was coming in. Yeah, and pulled it. Just lifted off it a bit. Still one set point for Hewitt. Come on! Yes. Brings out his own, come on. Deals Muller. Leighton going and jumping slightly across the left-hand side. Eight aces there. He definitely guessed there, Leighton, which is what invariably you do on a big point against a big server. And Muller, surprisingly, on the big points, has actually gone forehand. Going middle, yeah. His stock standard has been the swinging serve out wide, but mixing up well.
Gee, that's a good ball. Had enough time courtesy of the serve. The serve got up high. Layden couldn't get the purchase that he would have liked to have gotten, but that's a quality shot from Jules Muller. You can see there Layton illustrating the ball's bouncing up near his head. Once again, from Muller, looked a little suspect. Very much so, Wally. That's a couple of times now in this game. And, and you've got to think that there is some genuine fatigue there after a five-set match against Eugenie, which... Good effort from Leighton here. Just And Leighton would have picked up on that. He'll pick up on all the little things that are going on at the other end of the court. Control took, took hold of that point after the return. His second shot there was playing that on top of the baseline and forced the ball back onto his opponent to give him his third set point. Proactive there from Hewitt. It's all about the first serve now for Muller. Leighton just needs to get himself engaged in the rally. He's guessed wide. Hewitt, he's been burnt down the middle. As he's standing there now, his mind's doing a few calculations. I think he goes middle again, Well, Yeah. I sat on the fence. I was not prepared to comment. He just serves with so much variety. It's tough to pick. Now, you would see that ball and think, normally... That's a that's a that's a return for Leighton, but it actually jumped up. So normally he'd be another step closer in the court, so it'd smother that, and he would have that at the guy's toes. Ninety-nine times out of a hundred, but it, because he wasn't in that returning position for that particular play, it jumped up on him. Good signs, though. Every game over the last 10 minutes, just you can just see the pressure that's been mounted on his opponent. The match has turned, there's no doubt about that, but Leighton's got to have something to show for it here in this second set. If he goes down two sets to love, just a five or ten minute hiccup and he's in all sorts of trouble. So once again, the height of the bounce, giving him some problems, just not coming cleanly onto his racket. Just let them clap, Molly. Take a look at this. Don't say anything, but... OK, OK. Did... Did what happen? Is that, that what I think happened? He has He's... spun the ball, so it's bounced on Hewitt's side. It's got that much spin, it's jumped back over Correct. to his side. On a pass on on, on uh, game point to take it into a tie break. Wow. I mean, got to be an element of luck, but... He guessed right. Incredible shot there from Muller. Would have really liked to see that in a slow-mo. OK, this is what we've seen just a little bit of creep into the Muller game. Just tension there. You can see the arm. It yep. just really froze. That's a free point, isn't it? I yep. mean, that was, that, was a, that was a chip ball that he has played more into the fat part of that backhand side. But... So you can see a lot of tension in his body, even following that last last point that gave him the game, Muller, but 
So if Leighton can just steal one of these points. If I could just at this point mention their career tiebreak record. Hewitt is 152 wins, 138 losses. Muller 77 and 65. Both men in the positive. Not by much. Gee, that's a good point. Can't do much about that. This year, Muller 13 and 13. And Leighton's 3 and 2. Obviously hasn't played as many matches, but I think it's all a bit irrelevant, isn't it? Tie breaks a bit of a shootout. I think so. On a given day. You've got, to look at, you've got to look at their opponents, who they've played in that, on those tie breaks. All you would say is you would expect both these men to probably have a positive ratio throughout their career. Obviously, Leighton being the number one player in the world, and Muller with that natural serve and that fast court game, he can make some things happen. Yeah, the ability to get a couple of free points in a tie break is huge, isn't it? And you would think Muller with that serve, that will be the case. One all. Second set tie break. Last three second serves that Leighton has had on the backhand, he's netted the ball. Just having trouble dealing with the spin and the height of the bounce off the Muller serve. And that's a shot that you would almost back him to make. Yeah. Even if it's not with quality, you, you wouldn't think he would miss it. But anyway, he has unfortunately trails 1-2. So you can see the tennis off the Muller side of the court is definitely a lot more erratic now than it has been throughout the course of the whole tennis match over this last three games, three or four games. So it's critical for Leighton to be able to survive this and get in, load up at one set all because he can see at the other end of the court that things have definitely moved. Uncertainty for Jules Muller. I think it comes down to movement, doesn't it? Because there was one massive lunge to the forehand side in that rally, and that gave Leighton actually a short ball from which he retreated. But then that backhand chip from Jules, once again, it was just one big step to the ball. So hard to know whether he's just feeling some tension or whether it's fatigue. We keep speaking about the long five set match he had with Mikhail Yuzny in the round before. It's hot out here today courtside it's probably 35 degrees yeah once again the error from Muller we hadn't seen that for the first set and a half. Looks like Pat Rafter, I'm not mistaken, just sitting to the right there of Beck Hewitt. He's got his cap on sideways like some rapper. Oh, he's in. He's in, he's in New York. Yeah. Yeah. Formerly Beck Cartwright, big TV star back in Australia. The career has gone on hold, probably on hold for a while now. She's had three children. You think so? Since Mary Leighton. Hewitt now leading 4 2. And just some signs that Muller is unravelling. Down at 49% for the set here, Muller. On serve. Just a classic. 
classic serve volley point, isn't it? Creating space with the serve, not overplaying the volley. Now Leighton leading 4-3, two serves to come. Point there for Leighton. Found it hard to get many. Both players under 50% on first serve, so every first serve here in the tie break, very valuable. Right, Muller. This is a great shot from Leighton here, and you just thought Muller would go to the fatter part of the court where Leighton would just play that off. He decided to stick and stay. Good, Good guess water. in the end, but I, he, he probably thought I, I'm not quick enough to cover the open court anyway, so a little bit of a bluff there, and not the sort of uh, error in judgment that Leighton normally makes. Hasn't been, able to find his, hasn't been able to find his serve though, Muller, here in the tie break. You know, watching Molly, you sort of don't feel like, you know, before in the first set and a half, you thought he was going to find a lot of first serves, gets a lot of free points. Right here now, you feel like every, every point is contested. Did extremely well to get a racket on the ball late. Hewitt there, that was a massive first serve and very accurate. Just couldn't get enough purchase to get the ball to carry a little deeper. Five all. So once again, big point. Muller goes forehand. He goes T on the big point. just at the back of the court I think they're just poking their head down below sort of the last thing you really signage. want to concern yourself about is no. that five maybe, hole maybe they're talking making plenty of noise at the back of the court a couple of kids just a couple of kids let them stay I would have thought little so little fella just enjoying the tennis Well, Leighton Hewitt, there was barely any backswing. Just all looked to be getting a bit careful. But have a look at this, just holds it. And at the last minute, snaps the left hand through. Racket barely travelled a couple of feet. Yeah. Very controlled. How about how safe Muller was with his forehand? He could barely barely swing the, the racket. So He's got nervous, hasn't he, Muller? Oh, Since he served nervous. for this set, he got nervous. And Leighton now, his fourth set point on his own serve this time. done Leighton Hewitt he pulls out the lawnmower and why not he has been in all sorts of trouble the crowd are on their feet old habits die hard Leighton Hewitt he was down a set and a break Muller was serving beautifully served for the set a little bit of tension crept in to the Luxemburger but Hewitt wow his fighting instincts are still true so he has drawn this match level at one set apiece Drive a Volvo and you'll experience more than just comfort. You'll experience 100% luxury. Turbocharged power and all-wheel drive don't just promise acceleration. 
they give you 100% performance. And when it comes to styling, you'll experience the beauty of 100% Scandinavian design. So when it comes to finance, Volvo now offer an unprecedented 1.8% per annum across the entire range. Hurry into your Volvo dealer today. Fed up with your eyes always feeling dry? Whether it's due to age, environment or medication, use Refresh Eye Drops. Dry eyes occur when we don't produce enough tears or their quality is poor. So Refresh lubricates the eye, relieving the dryness and the irritation. And you can use Refresh Eye Drops as often as needed. Look for the new packs in pharmacies and selected optometrists. And instead of putting up with dry eyes, use Refresh. Ad for Life, the latest product news. Are you under financial pressure? Is it affecting your life and relationships? My Budget can help. In a free, no obligation consultation, My Budget can look at your financial situation and create a budget plan to get you back on track. We can then manage your budget and, if needed, negotiate with your creditors on your behalf. My Budget are experts in personal budgeting. Our caring and understanding staff are always ready to help you. Visit mybudget.com.au. Leighton turned it around as he so often does. He just doesn't go away. He didn't panic late. He just wasn't playing well. And, and Muller was certainly on song. And I don't think Jules Muller is loving it right at this minute. He had he had the match virtually on his racket. And he found a way to lose it. So who's, where does it sit now? Where? He's saying to his crew, where, where am I going to stand? Where do I stand? They they might have been suggesting move further back or go closer up, yeah. try to negate the spin. Leighton's going, where? Where do you want me to go? It's bouncing too high. He's normally pretty good at picking that up, though, isn't he? But see, I don't mind. When, when you see Leighton sort of getting a little more animated and fired up, we saw the lawnmower. That, that's really who he is as yeah, an exactly, athlete. Exactly. He, he engages with everybody and everything. So I, I, the first set, he was so placid. Well, I've I got to go with Leighton now. Yeah. I mean, I thought he was gone, to be honest. I thought if he goes down two sets to love, well, then you're just one bad game away from being out of there, given the quality of Muller's serve. But I've got to go with Hewitt. I think he'll get better. I think Muller will get worse. Didn't get worse in that game, but Roger, if I can just throw this stat at you, and I know you like a good stat, but for the match, Muller has made 26 unforced errors. 21 of those were in that second set. Yeah. And they all came towards the back end of that set too. So it was, it, it's almost been a match of two halves thus far. Paul Muller at the start, there is set two summary. Well, here are the two, look at the damning stats up the top end there. The, the service percentage from both players, no one would be happy about that. There you can see 23 winners, 21 unforced errors. As you said, Wally, the majority coming at the back end. Leighton tightened up, didn't he? 13 winners to six. That, also, those winners came towards the back end when Muller got a little nervous. And it was, uh, it was all about what Jules Muller was seeing in front of him. That was two sets of love lead. One thing's getting in front against quality opposition or, and people that have been have been great in the game, where you have enormous appreciation for what they bring to the table, but closing them, there's always that there's always that men, that mental side of it, that mental aspect, and the best players like Leighton who have been that good, they know that that's around. It's it's not easy to get them.
Good opening game here for Leighton as well. And you can always, you can after a, after the second set there, it was there was so much adrenaline around the court. You can there can be a lull. Not just a lull with the players, but also the, the fans. Game there for Leighton, leveling at one piece. Let's see, there's hot, the humidity's back. It's got a bit of shade. Might be the umpire's chair just shading her off. I thought Muller may have served volleyed a little bit more in this match. He certainly did towards the back end of that second set, but his modus operandi has been a big first serve, create a bit of space, and to come in off the first or second ground shot. serve here in the third set we're locked at one set apiece Muller leading by two games to one bit of a lull now early stages of the third set tough when you're facing a big server serving second just that little bit of added pressure Hewitt showing the new balls Good signs for Leighton at the moment. A lot more with the positivity in his in the way he's going about things, and, and also the 
the movement of Jules Muller. And also what's happening with the ball off his ten off his racket at the moment, so that he fought his that one there came off his racket and went the bottom of the net, Wally. And we suspected that the forehand would be the weaker side, and that has been the case as this match has progressed. But certainly at the start, the forehand was completely on song. Comfortable service game with new balls, as you might expect from Hewitt. Two all. It's a very measured performance from Leighton, isn't it? He's just... We feel he was a little tentative at the start, just kind of feeling his way into this match, but... There's been no great highs or, or great lows. Just reminding you to join the conversation. You can follow us at Fox Sports underscore news. Use the hashtag Fox Tennis. Answer any questions you may have. Roger Rashid, our resident expert. That's so clever. That the lob, well, that, that's that's a great shot, but the shot just prior. It's not where you hit a tennis ball all the time, but it's how hard you get it there. And Leighton just got it there at the right pace. Really clever shot, forcing Muller, who's taken the hat off. That's surprising. You can see he's thinning a little bit. You can feel now that Leighton feels like he's got things a bit more on his side of the court, as far as playing terms. Would have just thought today's the day to keep the hat on. But anyway, Muller's opted for the headband. Maybe he thinks that'll give him a change of fortune. Well, I wouldn't like that. He, that was important for him. Had trouble, hasn't he, with that backhand return, yeah. even on second serve? And it's very unusual. Yeah, that's just... That's his bread and butter. One of the great shots in the game. Big chance here. Fourth double fault for Jules Muller. Classic lefty serve volley point. There it is, the swinging serve just opens up the court beautifully. Tony Roach, Leighton Hewitt's coach, sitting on the sideline. Would be fairly familiar with that play. One of the great serve volleys of all time, Roachy, a lefty. Dirty all, second serve. Uh, point wasn't he needed that Muller just when I, when I watch Leighton here today he, he hasn't played badly by any stretch of the imagination but I'm just missing so often when we watch Leighton play there's, there's just moments of brilliance that just kind of break the match open break an opponent's serve and it breaks their will and I just I was waiting for that to happen there's a start but you almost like you need that on a break yeah. point, and then all of a sudden Gone. the electricity's there and he's off. Well, it's very damning, isn't it, to the opposition when, when a shot like that happens on a break point. So I'm just waiting for that, that moment, that little bit of spark in his game. Too good. Gee, that was, yeah, exactly. And that's all you can do. 
he's annoyed. He's frustrated with his backhand return, but that was just such a quality second serve. For you and I, we've sat courtside Davis Cup. We watched him. You've obviously sat through a couple of Grand Slam finals with him when you were coaching him. And too good again. He's like a coiled spring. He knew something was about to happen. Almost waiting for that to happen here today. But after two hours and two minutes, we're locked at a set apiece. And we're on serve in the third. Gilles Muller leads by three games to two. Match update thus far. Gilles Muller, 41 winners. Leighton Hewitt, 23 unforced errors for Hewitt. Just 11. It's fairly measly. And uh, if you saw those statistics, Wally, you would say it's two sets to love, Muller, wouldn't you? If I, if I didn't show you the score. Yeah, well, I guess just, just, just winners and unforced errors. Pinched that second set, didn't he? And unfortunately, Muller made a lot of his unforced errors. 28 in total for the match thus far at the back end of that second set. The one thing going in Muller's favour just for him mentally right now is that he's been able to stay ahead of the score on the scoreboard because really Leighton's got the better of the match right here. Nowhere near the same player, Jules Muller, than he was for the first hour and 15 minutes. I've been noticing that Muller, he, he went for the ice towel at end change from the very start of the match. Leighton has yet to ask for it. Is that yeah. a mistake? A hot mistake day like for Leighton? Yeah. Well, he's pretty good with those sort of things. Generally knows if the conditions are hot enough for him to actually go straight, to, straight for the towel. I, I would think if it's... I think he knows, he knows his body. I haven't seen, any, I haven't seen any sign of fatigue with Leighton no. right now. No. Certainly not. Brilliant pass at end range for Leighton Hewitt. Once again, going cross court. That is his favoured option when he's on the run. I would have just thought on a day like today, just keeping your core temperature down. No, I agree. Not I, taking any chances. I'd probably suggest it. Straight up. <laughs> Couple of positive forehands from Hewitt. To finish off that game, he levels things up at three all. Much safer numbers for Leighton Hewitt. 26 winners, 11 unforced errors. tape on its way through once again certainly has been fortunate with the neck courts Jules Muller last rally 17 shots Leighton just shaking his head but he'd almost be encouraged by the fact that once again Muller really reaching for that forehead the feet not quite getting to the pitch of the ball he got away with it
Good point there from Muller doing a good job here. Great return from Hewitt. Just fading the ball down to the feet of the incoming Muller. Muller obviously has a lot of respect for the Hewitt return because he, whilst he served volleyed a fair bit, he's definitely waited to come in more on his own terms after opening up the court, coming off a ground shot. Sort of tennis there. Again, setting up by the aggressiveness on the forehand side and then continued on with his backhand. Forehand now for Muller, isn't it? He, he kind of reaches for the ball. It's not in his contact zone. He's always almost at full stretch. Feet not quite getting behind it. Back to Juice. This could be a nice little turnaround for Leighton. Just was down 40 love. Serve too. It was right in the body, but Lane's ability to get out of trouble there with his two hand back and got some purchase on it as well. He's just not giving Muller the free points, no. is he? The free points have dried up for Muller, and he he doesn't appreciate it. And you can see he's engaged in every moment now. Lane, he's got that little twitch about him. Got all the little things that he does between all the points. It's all going on at a bit faster rate now. Once again, the, the big point. Where does he go? Centre T. Served to let. So Leighton now, he does a little calculation. Will he back himself to go centre T again? Does Leighton lean backhand? Wow. That's a fault. That's a fault. I'd agree with you there. No Hawkeye. No. Gee, that's rough. Leighton takes it fairly well. I really thought that was wide. Big points, forehead. So if there is any sort of pattern emerging, and he has served with great variety today, Muller, that would be the one. Whenever he's in trouble, he tends to go forehand. Three in a row. Too good. Incredible accuracy from Gilles Muller. He eases ahead in the third set by four games to three. This match, Roger, very evenly poised. Big out, wasn't it, from Gilles Muller in that game there. He was 40 love up, got back to Juice late and looked like an opportun opportunity there. So Muller's done, let's give him. Let's give him some credit here because Leighton had the momentum. It all swung around, but he's been able to stay involved and keep in front with his serve. Would have been easy to get uh, very disappointed having served for the second set. Gilles Muller, he's been around long enough. He's 29 years of age, so he's very experienced. Kept a level head and he's just hanging tough here in the second. Hewitt serving 
but that that tension didn't carry over, did it? No. Once once that set was over, he let it go. But yes, he's definitely tennis. not playing as well as no, he is. No, he's not playing as well as he is, but the tension that was in, involved in that last 15 minutes of that set, the back end of it, has just disappeared. Tennis matches, they go for so long, four and five hours sometimes, and you get little moments like this where one or two minutes in a match, if you lose concentration, and this is exactly the time that you've just got to be so tight with your game. And Muller's, you, Muller's that type of player that he can, like he just did there, that quick punch at the return to set the shot up, how aces come when you're not necessarily trying to serve an ace you just pick your spot serve within yourself and you get the accuracy Leighton eight aces six double faults Set Wally. Muller gets you out there with a couple of balls. His first one, that's the second one that he gets you really wide with. Normally he goes in the open court and Leighton was going to cover that. That time, for the first time in the match, he's gone back behind for the third consecutive time. Well done. Hasn't really been a feature of his game, the big serving, but just when he needs it most, 116 miles an hour out wide. Huge point right there. Well, this is... Great serving display from Hewitt when he really needs it most. Been pretty content, hasn't he, to slide, slide the ball up. wide. So he chances his arm, flattens a few out to the forehand. moment for Hewitt. A little slip up there and Muller's serving for a two sets to one lead and found some of his best serving for the match when he needed it most. Levels at four all. Leighton do a lot of 
is doing a lot of engaging at the moment with the, with his opposition, just just trying to see what his moods are, what his feelings. Knows that in the second set he actually got tight, and there was a lot going on inside of his head. Wow, that's what you're talking about. That little spark out of nowhere. That was very much vintage. Take a look at this from full stretch. Was able to get that ball from there, right in front of his opponent. And Brilliant. strong, isn't it? Because he, he was off and running for the next ball. Even if uh, Mullen gets a racket on that, Leighton had it covered. Okay, love 15. If he can back that point up with something good, that might be very demoralising for Muller. Too good. Just too good. Clinic. And you might think at home that looks easy, but that's actually not that easy because he's love 15 down. He's changing the direction, the flight path, and he's going to hit a cold winner. You see there, 49 to 32, 30 to 13. They'd be pretty good players at home if they were sitting there and thought that was easy. They'd be good. Very good. <laughs> I'd even suggest they should be over here. Oh, they thought that was easy, yeah. True. Yeah. Well, he's on song now with the return. The second serve not having the, the direction or penetration. And Leighton, with more energy coming out of his legs, his fast twitch, he's actually been able to just cover and jump on the ball a lot better. That's what I was looking for, fast twitch. I was just looking for that... Yeah. Uh, that electricity out of Hewitt's body, starting to get it now. The twitches are getting a little faster yeah. in between points. Oh. Didn't quite swing at it. Wanted to, it was the right play. Sort of sums up the day, though, doesn't it? It clips yeah. the tape, bounces back. So many times today, Muller has clipped the tape and it's gone on to his advantage. 30 all. Again, going wide to the forehand. The fact that he missed the forehand on a previous point could have gotten a little tentative and played this one within himself, but that is a fantastic shot. And look at Muller just sitting there, just waiting on that, that half of the backhand side. So he just sat and, look, these are the break points. No one's been able to convert so far. Just got a feeling something's going to happen right here, though, for Rusty. Oh, guessed right, too. He almost overran it. He did. Muller took a bit of pace off it. That one there, only 177 kilometres an hour. Frustrating, isn't it? You just get these little brief chances snuffed out quickly with positive serving Needed that a couple of points ago. Back to Juice, double fault from Muller. Hey! 
Okay. Pushing the envelope, Muller almost out of desperation. A lot of his best shots coming back. We've seen a moment of brilliance from Hewitt in this game. We just need one more. Is that too much to ask? No, I think we're going to get it. I just feel like he's getting more, more purchase on the return as well. He's going to have to paint the line here to get it past Leighton, I feel. That's wide. Oh, gee, for a minute there, I thought well, no call was coming. Would have had to send Adam Peacock out and have a word with the linesman. Oh. Yes. Body surf. Give him uh, credit, Jules Muller. Very, uh, it's a gutsy serve in the modern game for players now to actually serve a ball on a second serve to the body of a quality returner and take their chance coming forward. there in the uh, effects microphone the wind so it's blowing it's blowing around a little bit but there's the weaker side of uh, Jules Muller the forehand not quite trusting it as much as he was in the opening hour of the tennis match Once again, almost an overcommitment from Hewitt, just getting way out in front of that ball. Good pass from Leighton. He had plenty, he had plenty of time. That that ball was from Muller was a slight miss hit. This forehand here was a slight miss hit, but he thought he I'm going in anyway. Great pass, good movement, got behind the ball. Great volley. The backhand volley is a little easier because you naturally, your arm is out in front of the body. But have a look at that pinpoint accuracy. Maybe you didn't mean it, but struck it well. Maybe you didn't mean to cut it that fine. Quality game, this one. Both players stepping up. <laughs> Finally. After nine minutes, Gilles Muller holds serve. Tough game, but he leads 5-4, third set. A really tough game, that last one. Gilles Muller in all sorts of trouble, facing break points. Played his way out of trouble, but uh, both men just upping the quality of their tennis in that game, getting to the tail end of this third set. Hugely important, obviously, with the match standing at one set apiece. Psychologically, to go down two sets to one on a day like this, it's hot. Tough conditions, psychologically, that's damaging. Hewitt serving, 4-5.
big point for Moore to win there. And the first time he's hit a winner for quite a while off the back of the court, especially off that forehand side. Touch, good feel from Leighton. Saw his, saw his man stepping back here. Good wheels from Jules Muller. And that'll take a little bit out of the legs. There's no doubt about that. But all those little runs throughout the course of the match mean something. serving it 48 percent for the match 52 for this set so he's just bumped it up a little and Muller at 58 percent This is off the backhand wing for Muller. And Roger, I would suggest Gilles Muller's first round went for nearly five hours against Usney. Pretty hot today. They played over two and a half hours. It's very hot. And whilst he's not tired, just you know the shape of his body, just he's just getting a little bit untidy. So the longer Leighton can drag this on, the tougher the points are, maybe the better. I think this set would be absolutely critical for Jules Muller if he was to happen to lose his set. You would think there's no... That might be good enough for Leighton to get through. Sails long. Muller will appreciate an easy service game at this stage of the match. He leads six games to five. We are at one set apiece. We're close to closing in on three-hour mark. And Leighton has looked the better player in this set, but Jules Muller, to his credit, courtesy of his serve, has been able to stay in front of the count. So big game here for Leighton.
Doesn't look that safe, does it? He takes a big step out to the ball. He shanked a few of late, but that was time to perfection. There's that big step, big width between his two feet there, but he got away with it. about Leighton's ball at the moment is at least it's got it's got some purpose and direction about it where it did not have that at the early stages. You mentioned at the start of this match that Leighton always enjoyed playing the big players. He just loved the occasion. He was right up for it. But, you know, at times it was tougher for him playing the lesser ranked player. And I think at the start of this match, that was the case. Even though on rankings, Muller is ahead on reputation, Leighton is streets ahead. And I, I think he was, I really do think he felt tension. The opportunity to get into the third round of a major tournament had limited play this year. I think it weighed upon him. He knew it was a great opportunity. He's just starting now in this third set to play some better tennis. Here we go, Wally. Now the tie break. Wasn't much in that second set tie break. Who do you like here? Well, I've, I've just got to lean with Leighton because there'll be energy in this uh, in this tie break and he's, he just lives that, that adrenaline level. I think he's going he's gonna to get done, you? Well, he's been the better player this set, hasn't yeah. he? He has been in control and it's as you said it's only the serve of Muller that has kept him level pegging. Muller serves at 50% in the tie break. Leighton claims the tie break. Leighton's had three break points in this set, couldn't get any of them. He's had the chances. And that's what he needs. For Jules Muller, he will need every first serve or a high. Once again though, good variety, just hooking it into Hewitt's forehand hip. deal with. Interesting there as well. A ball that you would have thought for Muller, he would have just played that and moved forward naturally. The body where he actually just put a one one foot out there, chipped it, and was retreating. That's when he makes his mistakes, isn't it? When he when yeah. he plants and reaches for the ball. At the start of this match, he was hitting and moving through the ball, finishing past the point of contact. He looked a lot better. So whether it's fatigue or just the scoreline, I'm not sure. One apiece. He has to know it's going there, Muller. Leighton has probably gone there 90% of the time on second serves. So he was waiting. He took a pretty good cut at it. He'd be disappointed with that. It's with a Muller there, you can see that Leighton looking at his camp a lot. Just positive reinforcement. He likes the energy coming from there, but Muller will need to call on all his positive strength. That's good touch under pressure there for Jules Muller. Sure, Leighton here. This is a good serve. Got Leighton going back. Retreats there. But still, you need to come up with a, a quality shot. Net points one there. 10 from 19. 6 from 8. Very good for Leighton every time he's made his way forward. Gee, 
that's a good point. Great return off the stretch. He's tough to pass, isn't he? He, he moves well. Well, he read net. that one. A good stretch there. And you just thought maybe the lob was up there. Oh, I thought the lob was coming off I the first one, coming. to be honest. That's actually where he's burned him, isn't it? The yeah. lob on a couple of occasions. But well, a great court coverage right there. 2 3. Called wide. I thought it was wide. Yeah, I thought it was wide too. Have a closer look here on replay. Not a great approach. That's definitely that's wide. That's definitely wide. Yeah. That's, a, that's a ball. It's it's it would leave a mark. Yeah. Who was that? Jules, the call has been... Been so, made. He's not going to change the call. Three all. It says uh, did say four two on the scoreboard. The score was in Muller's favour. Well, this will show you here. The speed will show you it's clearly out. It's clear. No, I agree with you. to a spot late in there where he doesn't it's not his natural shot going back off into that forehand side with his backhand and finds the top of the net There's that brilliant rhythm of Gilles Muller. That's frustrating for Hewitt, just cannot get a racket. On that 127 miles an hour, down the centre tee once again on a big point, 5-3 Muller. shot from there. Forceful Leighton. Leighton was forcing his opponent, Jules Muller, hitting with aggression, hitting with purpose. It was a good, well-constructed point. You can see here Leighton's moving his player around. This is a quality point. And look at that. Um, that is taking your chances, isn't it, Wally? I guess he had a bit Rolling of scoreboard dice. pressure, didn't he? The score was in his favour. Realised that Hewitt was in the ascendancy in that point. Now three set points for Muller. match has gone on he's very clean in the first set well that was your, that's the scoreboard you were talking about there he just was, he was having a crack at that wasn't he he did get tight when he served for the second set absolutely a little tension creep in here will muller step up to the plate again on a second serve be more cautious so he backs himself amazing that he didn't make Hewitt play either one of those 
he's gone a lot of times cross court with that ball and that time he's decided to go for it again and, and I just think that's he now doesn't see it as clearly when he's in front does he I mean it, on both occasions so many times in this match on big points he has gone center T to this backhand court does Leighton pick that but then it's so easy for the lefty just to play a little three-quarter slider tough situation Hewitt down six five So once again, on the back of brilliant serving, Jules Muller takes a set. That's got to be hard for Leighton to swallow. He really was the better player for the majority of that set. But these tie breaks, they're just, they're like roulette. And Jules Muller, after 2 hours and 47 minutes, leads by two sets to one. What do you expect from your car insurance company? At times like this, I'd like my insurance company to be there for me. We put you first. Because at UE, we get what you expect from us. Call us on 136836 or go to ue.com.au and see for yourself. Hello. I'd like to tell you about Bet365.com, the world's biggest online sports betting company. The reason why they're the world's number one is very simple. They do great odds on a massive choice of sports. And guess what? Bet365.com is now based in Australia. Introducing McDonald's Mighty McMuffin with two slices of rasher bacon, a freshly cracked egg, spicy sausage and cheese all on a toasted English muffin. Mighty breakfast, mighty value. Only at Macca's. With up to 242 kilowatts of power, and one of the best handling chassis in its class, the Volvo S60 has made the perfect platform for a race car that has won the World Challenge GT Championship. But best of all, it can now be yours in a take-home version. And for a limited time, the Volvo S60 is available with 1.8% per annum finance, plus three years or 100,000 kilometers free scheduled servicing. Visit your Volvo dealer today. This is a month like no other. This is a whole new level. This is memories of legends past and of magic never to be repeated, but always to be retold. This is putting an entire stadium on your shoulders. This is a roar reverberating around the stadium and down into your spine. This is what I'm talking about! This is our game, Australia's game. This is September. This is violence. This is greatness. Leighton now, wow, has he got some work to do? That's a great shot there, isn't it, of the crowds. Court 11, court 17 in the background. Absolute capacity today. The USDA Membership Association are recognised today, so there's affiliates from all over the country come to the US Open for Labor Day weekend. Guests of the USTA. Places pumping. Thank you. Here on court 11, it's a capacity crowd. 90% of them are in his corner, but he's got a bit of work to do now. Well, this is an important moment as well because he would have felt like he had things under, when I was under control, he had good momentum dropping that set. So this first game is pivotal. Oh! And opens up with a double fault, so that's not... He's been very level emotionally in this match, Leighton, hasn't he? He lost that yeah. first set. He was down a break. Uh, Muller served for the second set. But Leighton's emotions have been pretty constant throughout. So I would imagine that will remain the case here in the fourth. It's funny, when he was younger, he seemed a bit more volatile, didn't he? He could really arc up. He could explode at a call. Few of those rough edges have just been rounded off a little over the years.
Hewitt holds opening game of the fourth. And thankfully, Roger, he's serving first. Because you remember in that previous set, he had some break points deep in that third set. Didn't get them. But now if you get break points and you, you're ahead that break in the latter stages of the set, it really is an advantage. It certainly is. There. And you can see that we're closing in on, on three hours. And if this extended match won't bother Leighton physically, here's the third set numbers and you can see here the serve for late 39 percent so that was a, it was actually a very good effort for him to push that set to a tie break considering you're serving at 39 percent 17 winners five unforced errors so a lot more solid performance that we're seeing on the on the uh, side of the australian extremely well here this is just gave him enough time there and that's strong stayed down low on that ball there while well, it's a tough game isn't it when you watch those slow motion shots the players sliding and decelerating and pushing off body really does take a battering and that's certainly been the case for Hewitt over the years brilliant pass down the line Shot. I mean, that is that's something you generally would see Djokovic, Federer do, and you go, oh, well, that's okay, they, they do that, but that's a, that's a tough shot to play. It's hard, isn't it, to change direction, ball coming across your body like that, and you have to send it up the line, but um, Muller's, he's almost better on that forehand when he takes it on. Change up there from Shields Muller. First serve at just 90 miles an hour, late getting out in front of it. One all. just has to guard against being cautious that approach was fairly safe and he paid the price Changing the direction with that forehand, Jill's Muller. 
If he takes a big step and lunges towards it, he struggles, but when he moves through the shot and really commits to it, he's been very successful. Trouble now for Hewitt, 15.30. Haven't seen the serve volley point from Hewitt for a while. He's taken that out of his repertoire. Wally, that was an interesting, uh, interesting approach because Jules Muller here gets to the left court. He can go to the backhand, but he goes to the forehand because he knows the reply is going to go cross court and he sits on it. He's been burnt with the backhand, cross court in front of him, also over the top. So it was a pretty educated uh, approach, wasn't it? For a player that's really built his career on, on moving forward, he it shows, doesn't it? When he comes to the net, he, he just splits his step at the right time, covers the percentages, reads his opponent's pass, and he's very tidy with the volley. He's volleyed well today, Muller. Hey. Oh. Just watching Roger Federer, Federer the other night, and uh, he, he, he volleyed well, but he, he can get passed by big distances, Roger Federer, because it's not something he's done throughout the course of his career, so he, his ability to read what's coming next is not quite as good as Muller's, for example. The, the volley itself is, is great, but... The net coverage, quite. Well, I just wonder whether Muller should have lobbed or just smacked it straight at late in there. Yep. Yes. Tough to get an angle past. Again, the tape going over for Muller. Good out so far for Leighton, so he's taking care of those two break points. Pretty, well, they extremely important, weren't they? I think two for Leighton, it's a bit, I, I know that uh, there's a real purpose behind it today against Muller, but the fact that he doesn't really possess that big kicker down the centre tee, it's deprived him of an opportunity of, of variety on the serve. It's been a bit one dimensional serving to that forehand court, break point yet again. Well done, Hewitt. He that did chance his arm. Yeah, he did. Yes. And what that does, that, that ability just to use the full box, it just squares your opponent up. Whereas at the moment, Jules Muller, there's no guesswork on potentially where Leighton might serve that ball. <coughs> He's able to just sort of position his body, get behind it. and. Muller has never really changed his returning position. He's never really slid across into the alley or forced Leighton to serve centre tee on that forehand court. Pressure mounting, break point number four in this game alone. Well, 
as a conversion rate, just as the wind picks up a little. He's two from nine for the match. Make like that two from ten. to go for that type of shot there when he's got the pressure in his favour. It's a hard one, isn't it? Because if you ask Leighton there as he was standing to serve, what do you want most? He'd say a free point. Yeah. But then Muller's thinking, I've got to try to make something happen. So you always walk that fine line, don't you, with shot selection? Nine times out of ten, he's been content just to drive that ball back cross court. Well done, Leighton Hewitt. Fights off four break points, and he leads by two games to one, fourth set. To the action here, Muller serving, trailing 1-2. And the good thing is, Wally, is that I'll be down there courtside giving you and Josh everything, Eagle everything. every single thing, and to our listeners back home in Australia, everything from down that court level. I don't want you, Roger, like Bernie, to get caught up in the moment. I want you to have, be sort of be detached and be able to analyse the match for us and, and give us something. I'll try and give you my best. Yeah, I don't want the adrenaline to take over. Look, I love the hype, so uh, yeah, look, we're looking forward to it anyway. We're, we're here in anticipation, not too far away actually. Just under three hours. <laughs> well served once again from Gilles Muller. Tough to get opportunities on his serve. One, two here from Leighton. That off forehand. One of his favourite shots. Really slides across the face of the ball. Gets that inside out trajectory. So it goes into double figures for the match. Leighton double faults. That's 10, accompanied by 15 winners. Jules Muller has 20, oh sorry, aces. Jules Muller has 22 aces to five doubles. Great depth. Muller looking to cover that return and do some damage. So much energy is lost off the ball when it hits the court, but if you serve that close to the service line, it's tough to deal with. Oh. 
standard serve has been the slider coming around the side of the ball and serving to Muller's backhand. A lot of the double faults have been when he's attempted to serve the kicker and get it to jump out to the forehand court. Three for the game. This is a problem. Legs, concentration. Had a long delay while he had his feet taped at the previous changeover. Three double faults in this game, and now Muller with a break point. like the first set Wally late and almost handing gifting a, a service break but Jules Muller every time there's a little chance an opportunity I mean that's a big miss so let's hit the top edge at the top of the frame he tightens up a little bit and Tight. you can see Leighton he's, he's really pushing that shoe around I think the taping is a bit uncomfortable he's doesn't seem settled in this service game Quite often you, you can get an ankle tape or you get your feet taped and then it feels all right. Then you put your shoe on and you think, hang on a minute, I've got no circulation. Hewitt in real trouble here now. He's down two sets to one. Break point for Muller. Second serve. late and that was a that was going to be a testing shot because it would have it had no pace it came across the front of him and he had to hit that backhand extremely well otherwise he was going to get burnt cross court it's a problem now for Leighton isn't it this match even if he gets out of it the work that he's done and you can see struggling a bit with the feet and he's got a David Ferrez in the locker room he won in about an hour and 20 minutes this morning He's watching this, rubbing his hands together. And Muller, just when he's got the opportunity to grab this match by the throat, he's faltering. keeps his feet not comfortable I think with the retape job but uh, he hangs tough Leighton Hewitt and leads by three games to two fourth set I'm thinking of Thailand be nice to go with someone special though <laughs> I was watching TV one night and then I saw eHarmony I'm like yes I'm gonna do this so I did it as I was going through the questionnaire I found that by the end of it eHarmony knew me better than a lot of people. It's about getting yourself out there. I've been on a couple of dates. There has never been an awkward moment. It's nice to know that this works. Review all your matches for free at eHarmony.com.au. Are you clocking up more debt every day? If you're struggling with debt, you're not alone. There are thousands of Australians just like you. Debt is nothing to be embarrassed about. But doing nothing about it certainly is. Fox Symes helps thousands of Australians each year resolve their debt and take control. If you're in debt, call Fox Symes now on 133328. That's 13 Debt. And free yourself from debt. <laughs> The Fox 
Volkswagen Jetta from 29,990. Volkswagen, das Auto. You are a smart, talented guy who isn't very nice. I am affable! Muller to serve. Hewitt leading 3-2. Roger, do you think, and I know you're not a doctor, but do you think with that retaping it's just blisters or do you think there's a problem with the surgery, the ongoing toe problem? It's hard to know. I mean, I just think maybe, you know, there might be a blister there or he just needed, he felt like it was just shifting around, but. Definitely lost a bit of juice out of his body. That, that adrenaline that he had in the in the second, third set has it's good. She I thought that one missed. How do you see that one? Tough one to call. But there's definitely not the same adrenaline coming out of Leighton's body that he had in those two middle sets there and. Crowd get up and about. I'm just worried now. The nature of this match. I mean, he's obviously desperate to get through, but I think it's going to come at a bit of a physical price, even if he can get over the line in five. That's well within himself, isn't it? 125 miles an hour. Trouble, Jules Mullet was going for that forehand up the line, but great backhand to stretch his opponent from Leighton there. Saves a couple of break points. Now has one to have a crack at himself. over but fortunately for Hewitt for the first time today he doesn't get the net cord and just when you thought Leighton was looking a little bit rocky in that previous game he's in all sorts of trouble he comes up with that break of surf so Hewitt now leads 4-2 here in the fourth he's just he's never done with is he no he's not, absolutely I and mean, he's always a believer that he can get through and find a way to work things out and but it just shows you the importance of when you get your moment in a tennis match to, to jump on it Jules Muller had that moment, 
in the previous service game of Leighton. Didn't capitalise. And again, we have a different uh, look at this match. Our esteemed colleague, Fred Stolle, worked with him over the years. He's adamant that uh, break point conversion is the most important stat. If that is the case, Gilles Muller, he's two for 12. 17% on break point. So you talk about getting those opportunities and taking advantage of them. The good players seem to be able to do it. Muller, not quite today. All you'd look at in those stats, so you'd want to, you'd want to see the 17. You'd want to see how they were. So for Jules Muller, for example, for Leighton, Leighton probably didn't have a play on half of his. And then you'd sort of decide on the rest. So you're saying you've got, you've got to look at them in isolation, not just at the numbers. Correct. Love Called good, love 40, so straight away. It was very tight that uh, third set. There wasn't many opportunities. And already here, midway through the fourth, break points galore. Late now, we'll have to fend off three consecutive break points. So you can't do much about that. That's a, there's a break point. So my illustration, imagine if you were playing Ivo Karlovic and you had 12 break points and he blasted 10 aces past you. Perfectly, Muller, that big high looping forehand got him back in the point. He's been pretty good with that forehand down the line. That was one of, he actually just hooked that back a bit to the centre of the court. Okay, two gone. Muller was certainly in that point. Be pretty annoyed at himself for missing a backhand volley. Two saved. builds from Gilles Muller late he's definitely not happy and he Look. said to he said to his camp there I can't move I can't move so you'd have to think it's the toe bothering him so anyway back on serve here Hewitt leading 4-3 in the fourth this is the last point after Leighton lost this service game you can hear there see there he says I can't move I can't move remembering he had his toes retaped but maybe there's a deeper issue there and you can see very disappointed with his foot while he was there, but sometimes that's just a reaction to the result that's just happened prior to. Played the whole of the Australian summer, getting needled up to play his matches, which is a tough situation, obviously. Had a couple of surgeries after the Australian Open on the big toe. And then he has basically spent since the French Open building up a volume of matches and just managing the injury to try to stay competitive. And I mean, this is the worst scenario, isn't it? The American hard court season, really damaging on the body. Almost get the feeling Nadal opting out, giving his knees a bit of a breather this year. I think he might have been able to play, but just wanted a rest. All of interesting to see how much he plays post US Open. There's a chance here, so as much as Leighton's got some issues, Jules Muller also has some problems going on. I, I think both players are tired. There's no question about it. It was extremely hot. The first two and a half, three sets, the temperature was well above 30 degrees. Court on court would have been 35 degrees or more. And I, I think they're both now suffering the effects of that first two and a half hours in the sun. Matches now at three hours and 33 minutes. Mm -hmm. 
surprisingly, given that there's no Hawkeye out here and the speed with which Muller serves, very few sort of contested and questioned line calls. Players have just accepted the calls with equanimity. Well, Muller wouldn't play in front of Hawkeye very often. No. Needed those two big serves, so he would just probably take that as the routine. Late and different matter has been and is normally on the big court. First serves for this man, Jules Muller, from Love 30 down. And that's a fine volley moving away right at the last minute there. Has a second look, but I think it did catch the line. A bit of heat there from Gilles Muller. Draws level at four games apiece. moment if you Jules Muller and for Leighton it's important just put everything aside here and just try and stay in front purely because you understand what goes on at the other end of the court mentally for Jules Muller a fraction of doubt from Hewitt. There have been times in his career where I don't think we've seen him up the net enough, but he understands how to get to the net. Good transition. And once he's there, he follows beautifully. Court. And Muller playing extremely safe. nearly given up on this point. He plays this shot here. He doesn't really like it. He's not that enthusiastic, but fortunately for him, Leighton not quite doing enough with the approach. 30 all.
and interesting when there's a little bit of heat on being pressure Jules Muller decides to take that backhand down the line and almost every time he may have made one for the match but every other time an error comes off the racket Just looking a little sluggish there as he tried to move forward. Back to a hold serve. Muller has a two sets to one lead. Hewitt leading 5-4. Now in the fourth. This match turning into a bit of an epic. OK, Leighton has the advantage of serving first in this set. Any sort of pressure now on Muller is absolutely magnified. Hewitt leading 5-4. something wrong I'm just out of nowhere that was a pretty big miss from Muller Maybe. There's no question that both players are feeling the pinch a little bit physically. I think a lot of the mishits and errors that we're seeing from Muller in particular are just the sluggish feet, not reading the ball, seeing it early. First step, not great. He looks tired around the eyes. Not just the physical effort, but it's the effort in concentration that wears you down. That is just pulling the trigger and, and hoping I hoping that you get a result there. I know he's done it. I know he's done it a couple of times and that and the reason the umpire there asked for silence is that as soon as Leighton hit that ball back into into play, someone said yes from the crowd. Thirty old. It's a great shot, isn't it? You see the ball catch the line and then swing away. So even if Leighton guesses, with, with every revolution, it's getting further away from his backhand. It's a bit Wayne Arthur's like, isn't it? The way it moves through the air and then off the court. And herein lies the problem for Hewitt. Opportunities, half chances can be snuffed out so easily. Trouble for Muller. 
on return, he, he just can't string the points together. No. It's very patchy at the moment. In the first set, first set and a half, he was reeling off consecutive points and really building pressure. Here now, they've got a, too many errors. Just taking the pressure off Leighton when he serves. Number 13 for Leighton and damaging really at certain part, certain stages of this match. Adam Peacock's courtside. I, I will be interested to hear what he says. He's right behind the Hewitt chair. You can see the players from close range. They just look leg weary to me. Nice serve there from Leighton, but there's no energy in terms of yeah, it was getting up off the ground on the serve. Three hours 46 in the heat of the day. You'd expect a little. You'd, you'd expect them to be in some sort of discomfort yeah. at this point. I mean, that's just natural. Jules Muller, when he gets this second serve to the backhand, he's got to forget about going up the line because when he's tried to thread the needle, he's missed, and there he's safe, and he really just opens the court up for Hewitt. He's doing it all at the wrong times too. You don't mind having a lash out if you're down on the count and you just sort of... He might also be better just trying to jam it straight back at Leighton, as so many returners do these days. a little perplexed. Once again, too many errors. Getting Leighton off the hook and Hewitt goes ahead. Six games to five, fourth set. Once again, Gilles Muller has opted for the ice towel. Something Leighton Hewitt has pretty much rejected throughout the course of this match. Let's hope it's not to his detriment. It's been extremely hot. 10 to 5 in the late afternoon now. You can see the shadows making their way across the court. So conditions are pretty pleasant now. But we get the feeling there's a bit of residual effect from the effort that these two men put in, particularly in those first three sets. Big crowd here on court 11. They are very much in favour of Leighton Hewitt winning this match. But this man, Jules Miller, might have something to say about that, and in particular, his serve. He's got to serve well now. He's trailing 5-6 in the fourth set. Feet <laughs> just not getting in position. A little too close to him as he tried to crack the forehand winner. Last two service games, Leighton's been able to get that first point, get ahead of the count. Oh. Gee, that's a big second serve. And the most acute Second serve that he's gone without wide.
Breeze just picking up there. I'm not sure whether that contributed to the double fault for Muller, 15.30. shot moving forward just falling on that ball and out of nowhere Leighton has two set points to take it to the fifth look at this game from uh, Muller there was the tired forehand in the opening point the double fault and then once again not getting to the pitch of the ball on the forehand wing and you can look at Muller's eyes I mean he looks he looks exhausted That serve, though, I think he could be on his deathbed and he could still serve. It's just a wonderful, fluid motion. Great summation of forces. Doesn't take much out of him. You've got to like the position now for Leighton. Second serve. He's got a sweat on the slider, I think. Does Muller serve volley and just keep it on his terms? Leighton Hewitt, he just refuses to go away. He has an unbelievable temperament for this game. The crowd are on their feet. They've endured three hours and 53 minutes with the players in the scorching sun. And what do you know? Leighton Hewitt is involved in another five-setter. There are machines that can do things for us, that can see right through us, want to replace us. But they are not us. There is one machine as alive as we are. It doesn't click or buzz. It roars. Jaguar. It's buy two, get one free time on a wide range of DVD movies at JB Hi-Fi, Australia's largest home entertainment retailer. Choose any two must-have DVD movies from specially selected titles in store like Johnny English Reborn, Friends with Benefits, Bad Teacher, Paul, Zookeeper, Change Up and Twilight Saga Eclipse for $12.98 each and get a third movie absolutely free. There's heaps more titles to choose from, just look for the stick at stock in store. But be quick, offer ends Sunday, September 23rd. JB, you've done it again. Introducing McDonald's Mighty McMuffin with two slices of rasher bacon, a freshly cracked egg, spicy sausage and cheese all on a toasted English muffin. Mighty breakfast, mighty value. Only at Macca's. So yeah, I've been looking at getting an online savings account, but there's just so many. They're pretty much all the same now, aren't they? Well, not really, mate. You see, the new Ram Sabre account has one of the highest rates out there, 5.75%. And you can sign up easily online. Small effort, big gain. Yeah, right. Toby, let's ride. Visit rams.com.au. Bonus conditions, each month deposit $200 and make no withdrawals. It's where smart technology and your passion for what's new come together. From 27990 Drive Away, iX35, the incredible made possible. Okay, question for the viewers out there. Bernard Tomic is one of three teenagers in the 2012 men's draw. Who are the other two in the men's draw? Two other teenagers. So play along and answer with the hashtag Fox Tennis. 
I don't think uh, I know the answer to that. I'll have to scour the media guide. That's what uh, Adam Peacock was alluding to. You could see late there, you've got to run very quickly to get to the drop shot, but then you've got to jam your toe right here. You jam your toe into the court to decelerate, and that is what Leighton has had a bit of trouble with. So let's hope it doesn't get worse as this fifth set progresses. That was crisp, sharp movement, fast twitch. Yep. And the return was a little bit, this is through the middle here, so Leighton takes two steps, covers that, finds the angle. So it'll be interesting to see what, whether Jules Muller is, starts searching a bit for, for what to do here, or whether he can keep his calm. Well, he's making too many errors now, isn't he? He's yep. made 57 unforced errors now. Oh! And a lot of them, it's when he's pressing to try to make something happen when he gets those half chances. That's what he did well in the first set and a half. Wally was able to get that, get really good direction. There's uh, Beck Hewitt. She sat through a lot of five set matches. And there's... Uh, Pat Rafter as well. Got the light. Just looking after the UV. He's sitting through quite a lot of five set matches now. He used to play a lot of five set yeah. matches, but obviously in his role as Davis Cup captain, he's here urging Hewitt on. Hewitt will be a big part of the team when they take on Germany in Hamburg you'd two weeks it. after. You'd rather be playing in them, wouldn't you? Yeah. Because you've got a bit of control. That's probably you? out there saying, Sir Bolly, Sir Bolly. <laughs> And, and Roger, think of this as, as like a, a long distance running race and you're getting towards the tail end. It's almost like if you can just gather your thoughts and, and get your mind Push. and your body going together and just have a little 10, 15 minute spurt. Just it's like, really. It's like, that, it's like that runner that just breaks the pack. Yeah, just. Breaks their. Breaks their uh... Just group your resources and, and have a real go. A lot easier said than done. Well, I think Muller's trying that here. He's, he's actually tried to step up and actually try and be quite aggressive on the return. And even if there's a little bit of bluff, like if you hit a good shot, you know, just run to the chair, yeah. just, just come out of your shoes for five or ten minutes, see if you can't crack it open here at the start of the fifth and really break the spirit of Jules Muller. Hewitt's done the first part. Held serve in the opening game. Probably needs a little bit of help from Muller now. Needs Muller to miss a few first serves, but somehow Leighton, one well, of the most fast twitch athletes I've ever witnessed on a tennis court, he needs to bring all of that to bear in these next couple of returning games, I believe. There's, uh, there's Adam Peacock. And Tim Moran, Tim our Moran. field producer. They've got the best seat in the house. And Alicia's husband, Tim, who was just giving a bit Leighton a bit of advice. I think that's coaching. I think. Is that coaching? Here's the stats for set four. Muller up serving was a lot better. Look at Leighton down at 35% again, able to grab the set. That's an extraordinary, uh, extraordinary result, really, when you look statistically at that. That's amazing, isn't it? If you looked at that, you'd say, well, he's gone. Yeah, if I just showed you that stat alone, 61% versus 35, with a Muller serve, you would say, what's that, a 6-3 set? I would say the reverse would be true. So good effort for Leighton. Four hours, we tick over the four-hour mark. He's been here before plenty of times. Easy power on the surf. There's no big knee bend. There you go, Leighton. This is what we're talking about. Just I think urge you've got yourself on. I think you've got to get in the face of your opponent. Let him know how fresh you're feeling. Just look at him down the barrel. When Leighton was in his prime, this fifth set, he would jump out of his shoes. Great left hand, the double-handed back, and it's up above shoulder height. Let's have a look at this. 
Pugh just uses that left hand to hook it. Get the ball to drop low. Brilliant return right there. serve there good shake 109 miles per hour brilliant serving from Muller not much can go wrong with that service motion as pure as you like with that forehand down the line for Muller. When he gets it right, it's a really telling shot. And he certainly did for the first set and a half. He was all over that shot. It's been a little more erratic as time has gone on, as you would expect. It's been a brutal encounter. Four hours and two minutes now. One of the few occasions when he's taken that backhand down the line that he's come up trumps Gilles Muller. That was a more measured approach. miss it was there but it was, it was a, just a slightly awkward position wasn't it well it wasn't in that real comfort zone no, and it you, wasn't a real high it was just in, it was that in between chest high is perfect on the backhand volley and then that was just above shoulder height and it was almost a little stumble there too as Leighton went to get set for that volley so once again the pendulum swings Shields Muller with two break points running backwards exactly he didn't really need to put that he could have put that ball in play couldn't he pressure i don't think muller jules muller understands the pressure up the other end of the court too well no well it, it's been his problem hasn't it yeah making creating chances he's done awfully well 16 break point opportunities but he's only broken three times Fault called on Hewitt. Hopefully that makes him a little aware on some of these second serves coming up. Again. Wow, oh. that's out of the stadium. That could be a real pivotal miss here. Look at that. Had the volley. 
has generally volleyed pretty well off the backhand side, and look at that. And it come on as well from Leighton, so there's a... That's fair enough, isn't it? Yeah, yeah I'd do that too. I mean, there's just a bit of frustration. Just well, it. you do it in the second game. You're very hot-headed. <laughs> <laughs> Big save there. He reached for it, though, didn't he? He didn't run through the volley. Volleying's all about your legs. That's a great... That's just a great match awareness, isn't it, right there? Sense the tension in Gilles Muller. Sense the opportunity, the element of surprise, and the execution was perfect. Great point there from Hewitt. The better one for Jules Moore, the one where he, can, where he hits through to the fat part of the court. That's his no, most natural. You sort of think if you, if you are making some errors on return, basically just hit the ball back where it's come from, just yeah. back through the yeah. line. And right. if you hit it well enough, it, it's really awkward anyway because the server's completing his motion and trying to regroup at the back of the court. Gee, Leighton's red in the face. I don't know if that's sunburn or oh. exertion. Eat your heart in. What a classic serve volley point from here. That was a ripping volley, but this is a tough smash hanging up in the air, finds the open court. And as you said, that's about as good as Pat Rafa would have ever played them. Yeah, that was a good backhand volley. Required some real commitment. And that's exactly what we want to hear. And that's exactly what Leighton Hewitt is doing. Charging the net to close out that game. And he leads 2-1 here in the fifth set. Crowd are loving this, aren't they? Yeah, they look well, they love theatre here. They just they, they love the tension of five-set tennis. Remember in the first four days we had ten five-set matches in the men's, all being won by the player that had lost the first two sets. That's Extraordinary never happened. result. It's never happened before. Never happened in the history of the game. And this man was involved in one of them, Jules Muller. That's right. Coming back from two sets to love down against Mikhail Yuzny. He saved match points. There was one match in the second round where two guys met and they both won their matches from two sets love down. Fabio Fornini and Garcia Lopez. So we're on a hard court, but it does leave a mark. When the ball hits the hard court, a little bit of the, the nap is taken from the ball and it leaves a mark. So Leighton, certain that that one caught the line. Both players have been great in that respect. Been a lot of close calls, but very rarely have they question the umpire or put any pressure on the linesman which is great to see sometimes players very unfairly start to intimidate linesmen or umpires and the whole contest descends for the slinging match game from Muller. So after four hours and 11 minutes, we're at two games apiece in the fifth. All right, Roger, I'm going to put you on the spot. Who wins from here? Oh, look, I've got to go with Leighton. I mean, I've sat through that many five-set matches with him. And in our period, it was, it was really funny. I'll still get goosebumps when I talk about it, 
whenever Leighton got to the fifth set, regardless of if he'd been hammered in the fourth and was looking down and out, he would jump out of the chair and bounce around on his toes and look up as if like, okay, we're here. We've done the training for this moment. And more times than not, in fact, 12 straight occasions, he, he won those, those final sets. So in saying that, Wally, I've just got to go back and look at the, the effort and what the memories are in, the, you know, the, the stuff that he's got in the bank. Those memories aren't clouding your judgment? Well, it's probably his best tennis, but when you've got that much experience in, the, in these moments, I'm sure, I know these are isolated events. Does have the advantage of serving first. Pressure builds at the back end of the set. And when I watch Jules Muller do what he's done in sets two and sets four, I think when he's had the opportunity when to he's close had opportunities, it out. I think this is now going to escalate it in right. this final set. Yeah, I tend to agree with you. And I think the point you make about Leighton and that wonderful five-set record, it's part of who he is as a tennis player, isn't it? He prides himself on his competitiveness and his, his fitness and his endurance. So sometimes I think he just sets his mind, just locks it in, gets determined. You watch his feet, they're fast twitch, you can hear the shuffling. That shuffling's coming from this man, not Jules Muller up the other end. And I like the fact that I'm actually watching that. Just touch on their five set record. Career, Hewitt, 30 and 18. 30 wins, 18 losses. Muller, 9 wins, 10 losses. In five set encounters. Couple of backhands floating long from Muller. Hewitt holds serve. He leads three games to two in the fifth set. There are machines that can do things for us, that can see right through us, want to replace us. But they are not us. There is one machine as alive as we are. It doesn't click or buzz. It roars. Jaguar. If you ever find yourself trying to capture an impossible photo on a phone, make sure it can take up to four shots per second. The HTC One, with amazing camera and Beats audio. Now available in a new colour and with blazing fast 4G. Exclusively at Telstra. The new i40. Is making an impression on the experts. And now available as a stunning new sedan. I-40. Make an impression. There's this island and it's got super cute kangaroos. That island has got rare kangaroos. Chevron's been developing energy here for decades. We need to protect their environment. We have a strict quarantine system to protect the integrity of the environment. 40 years on, it's still a Class A nature reserve. It's our job to look after it. It's my job to look after it. Welcome back to Day 5 action here at the US Open. Question, 
Bernard Tomic is one of three teenagers in the 2012 men's draw. Who are the other two? We've had a few responses. Trivia answer. Jack Sock, wild card entrant, as was Dennis Novikov, both young Americans. Jack Sock still going in the draw, as is Novikov, so worthy wild card recipients. And of course, Bernie's still going in the draw too. Takes on Andy Roddick tonight. Just hours away from that clash. Tomic v Roddick on Arthur Ashe Stadium. That will be an absolute cracker. Don't forget, you can see that around 9 a.m. Eastern time in Australia. Okay, moments like that take on a greater significance given the scoreline. Love 15, double fault. Again, Hewitt takes some sort of advantage. Once again, the first serve of Muller just too good. First serves in for the match, Muller at 69%. When he gets his first serve in, he wins 85% of the points, so that is a damning statistic. Not much Hewitt can do about it, it's just quality. Look at the accuracy there. Hits the centre tee and moves away. Beautiful outswinger. Leighton just suggesting that the lines person was obscured by him. Oh, you are now honing in on that lines person. I'd mentioned that both players had accepted the calls well. But with fatigue and a bit of tension, can come a bit of edginess, so... Let's hope the lines people can stay focused for the final stretch here. Three all. Quite often, too, when matches get tight, that's when players start to hit the ball a little closer to the lines. They're going for more. There's more on the line. And mistakes happen. And with a bit of anxiety and a bit of pressure, that's when you get the blow-ups. That's why Hawkeye's been a great technical innovation in this game, I believe. Just makes it about the tennis. Doesn't descend into a fast when bad calls dictate. Brilliant from Leighton Hewitt. Quick reaction, Wally, to his ability to finish the serve. And then power there, this first step, that was the key. The first one and two powerful steps out there was enabled him to get behind the ball as much as possible. Great effort. Leighton also has a good ability to forget about what's going on with his body and just sort of hone in on every individual point when you get, when you get to this part of the match. Yeah. And he feeds off every, every individual win that he has. You say Leighton's got a great ability to forget about his body and just focus on the moment. I wonder if that'll be the case in about 10 years. He's going to have some arthritis. Well, that's a great shot there. Well, I just think that's just life of a sportsman, isn't it? At any level, I mean, you get the rugby, you get the AFL, you get soccer. I mean, I just think every... You know, you want to play, put yourself out there on... as an intense, uh, you know, elite athlete. I think that's the... Uh, the price you pay. I'd take that price.
I wonder if some athletes, when they're in their 40s and they can't kick a footy with their son, whether they think it is worth the, the price. Yeah, look, that, it's going to happen. Yeah, there's, there, there'd be the odd one that's definitely in that category. Anyway, back to the action, 40-30. shot no pace to work with whatsoever and the crowd they're just loving it Hewitt he had to deal with a ball that was just fading away with nothing on it brilliant backhand there he leads 4-3 fifth set. and what a match we've got coming up Bernard Tomic the Australian teenage sensation is up against Andy Roddick the 30 year old veteran who has announced his retirement and Roger Ashid that will be coming up in about an hour and a half's time on Arthur Ashe Stadium, under the lights, can you imagine the atmosphere? Well, it's going to be an atmosphere that we've never experienced. We've been to Davis Cup finals, we've seen that, but this will be electric. Let's hope it's close to a full-packed house here, 24,000 people beaming in and honing in on, uh, on Bernard Tomic and Andy Roddick. Jeez, imagine if it goes the distance under the lights. We'll be here, Fox Sports will be here, you'll be courtside. We will bring you every ball struck. It's going to be a cracker. Now back to Leighton Hewitt, former champion. He's out on court 11. He's doing it tough. We're going five hours in the sun here. It's been a brutal day. Courtside temperatures around 35 degrees. Both men feeling the pinch at this point. Hewitt, though, he's got a the heart of a warrior. He will not go away. He's been down a set on a couple of occasions. He keeps fighting back. Saved a lot of break points throughout the course of this match. Just got his nose in front now, 4-3. Technically, a much sounder player, Leighton Hewitt, so I guess when you, when you do get a little fatigued and you're not in the best possible position, you need some good technique, and we've seen Muller fall apart a bit in that respect off the forehand wing. That's a big serve there. If I, if we stop this match right now and interview these both these players, one question: Do you think you'll win from this point on? I reckon Dills Muller would say, "Well, I might." You know, I'm Leighton, not sure. Yeah, Leighton would say, "Yes." Yes, I'd agree with that. And I think that's what's that's that's the basic, basically what's going on. The only problem is that serve. Muller's got this incredible serve, and of course we get a tie break to close out a fifth set here at the US Open. Unique in that respect, this tournament. Personally, I don't mind it. Adds a bit of no, drama. Like Can seem a little unfair. Good move from Muller there. He recognised where Leighton was going to be playing that shot from. It was an awkward position, so he just comes in, covers the territory, knowing the ball's going to come up. This ball has to come up and Muller just closes. Quite a good volley, too. Yeah, great volley. That's not easy. Look at that. That's on the service, just behind the service line. He's been able to find that acute angle in front. He moves well in the forecourt, Gilles Muller, and he's got simple swings on the volleys, and he really understands net play. There's no doubt about that. Service profile for Hewitt, 18 aces. That's been negated to a degree by those 13 double faults. First serve percentage for the match, 42%. I think he'd like to improve upon that in these closing stages.
letting off a little steam. Actually looked pretty close to me. Yeah, I thought it was pretty close. But it's hard for me. Our spot. I don't mind that. Layton, he's just dialed in. He's that's fine. Some people say, "Oh, that might upset the way they go about it." Feeds off, feeds off the energy, so that wasn't happy with the call. Still won the point. Let's a few people know about it, but it, what's it? What it's actually doing is topping up his reserves. Look at this. This is a tough shot. Just off the back foot a little bit, but he hits it with direction and speed for a cold winner. The backhand's starting to become a telling shot, isn't it? For Hewitt. That shot there, Muller, any time he's down in the count, he plays it really well, that aggressive backhand off the return. And then when he has half a chance in a game or a break point, he doesn't really believe in the shot and he lifts off it. And more often than not, he's missed it or shanked it. Once again, Hewitt. Great first step. Nice clean takeaway. Comfortable service game, and Hewitt leads 5 4, fifth set. It is a great atmosphere here. These fans have stuck with these two players throughout the course of this match. And it has been lengthy. Well, over four hours, you can see in the background there, four hours and 30 minutes, these two have been on court throughout the heat of the day. Real contest. Contrasting styles, the big serving lefty, Gilles Muller, and one of the great counter punches of all time. Leighton Hewitt are going at it. Muller serving to stay in the match. Big miss there from Jules Muller. It looked like he had the point under control there. Leighton was doing it, just getting that extra ball back. That's the quality that he has. And then Jules Muller pulled the trigger again. But it, was a, it wasn't just a miss. It missed by maybe eight, nine feet. So again, pressure moments. We're seeing a very clouded Jules Muller inside his mind. I'm sh Leighton right now will be thinking very clearly. Backhand, the cross court backhand, as this match has gone on, has gotten better. In the latter stages of this fifth set, it's been at its best. You can see that ball there, that approach so short that he gave Leighton plenty of time to get behind it. And... Needs his big serve here, Muller. 34 races. Probably needs to buy one now. Loves the forehand serve when he's in trouble to both courts. That's disheartening, isn't it? Yeah. Love 30. You just want to get your racket on the ball. No chance. Here's his chance. Do you think you go to Hewitt's backhand? I think so. That was a mistake. One of his best returns for the match right there, Leighton Hewitt. You said he's going to lock in. He's done exactly that. An incredible shot. Look where he's in the court. Metre and a half outside the doubles alley and maybe a metre and a half behind the baseline.
Incredible stuff. So after four hours and 30 minutes, 33 minutes to be exact, Leighton Hewitt has two match points. Good point. Give Jules Moore some credit there. Had to play three forehands in coming off this one here. Like just, just out of his reach there to get a real purchase on it. Just couldn't get a piece of any shot, no. could he, Hewitt? Nice measured point there from Jules Moore. No panic. Now, one to go. This is the well, he's, gone, he's gone wide. He's, he's, seen, he's seen the pass from Leighton Hewitt. He's seen the, the other... the. Uh, the return of serve that went past him. I would think he's got to go big down the middle. I don't think he has much other option. Leighton's look, he's leaning onto the, towards that swing serve. He did go down the middle, but it didn't have the direction it was going to be returned. Oh, did not think it would end that way. Didn't deserve to end that way. Gilles Muller, he was gallant throughout that match. These guys have been on tour together for a long, long time now. Since way back in 2000. And Leighton Hewitt, an old warhorse, one more time, finds a way out in a five-set encounter. Well, it was an exceptional look. He's extremely happy with that. He gets another chance and stays alive here at the US Open. Gives Paddy Rafter a high five. He's the captain, Davis Cup captain. And the fact that he just hung in there and found his best tennis in the fifth set and got over the top of Jill Muller was a, extremely pleasing for, from my point of view, for also from Leighton. Here's the finish. It's unfortunate for Jules Muller, Wally, because he should not have gone out on his ninth double fault. No, he didn't deserve that, did he? He'd served beautifully throughout the course of the day. But I think that's, as you said, Leighton was playing his best tennis at this stage of the match. So Gilles Muller, he's feeling the pressure. There's no doubt about that. He knows he's got to come up with a quality serve. But uh, look, the big thing for me too, Roger, was Leighton in that match. He, he only made 30 unforced errors. Yeah. Six a set. I mean, that's pretty good. And the crowd just acknowledging Gilles Muller as he leaves the court. That's disappointing. And uh, Adam Peacock, he doesn't miss much. And he is courtside. So we're all ready for an interview with Adam. Yeah, thanks, Wal. Just a one-word question to start with, Leighton. How? How do you keep doing this? I'm not sure. Don't know. <laughs> Don't know how my body can keep doing it, but uh, yeah, I love competition. I love, uh, I love the fight out there. I love the one-on-one -on -one, uh, atmosphere out here, and uh, you know that never say die attitude. Yeah, in, in some ways, yeah, I'm su surprised myself because I haven't played any five-set matches and, and to go over four and a half hours, and I, I feel pretty good, to tell you the truth, and, and I moved probably better in the last set than I did in the first set and a half. So, um, yeah, I, I'm thrilled to get over the line. Is that guesswork at the moment, given you are still... Uh, you've had some matches this summer, this American summer as well, but is it still a bit of guesswork when you get to a fifth and you're wondering how you're going to cope? Uh, a little bit, but... Mate, I don't think there's anyone that trained harder after a surgery than I did. So, yeah, I, I think back to all the high attitude training I did and, uh, you know, I copied a lot of the football training and, you know, it, it's sort of blood, sweat and tears out there. And, and, you know, in the back of your mind, you have that when you go into a fifth set. And, uh, you know, I used to have one of the best fifth set records going around and, you know, I lost a few tight ones in the last couple of years. But, um, you yeah, know, nice to turn around today. You're still very much in the positive. That makes it 31 and 18 in five <laughs> set matches. So it's all good. What about the feet, mate? I, I saw you, I was sitting just behind so you took off your shoes it looked like a bit of a horror show you your toes there all good there uh, uh, yeah I just had a whole lot of blood coming out and uh, you know, I, was, I think one of my nails has gone through the skin out there so um, that didn't feel great and uh, it was more just trying to block it out more than anything and, and get some padding on it and you know the padding didn't do a lot but you know it might have saved it a little bit and uh, yeah, I'll get it looked at when I go inside. Fair effort from Gilles as well. He came off a four and a half uh, hour match and he's copped another one right here. He, he was with you all the way, wasn't he? Yeah, especially for a big server. You know, a lot of those big guys, you know, the six foot four, six foot six guys, they struggle backing up after a big match. And to his credit, you know, he's gone four and a half hours again. And, and I don't think fitness really got to him. You know, 
it was nice to get a double fold on match point, but you know, I don't know if that was lack of fitness. Now, a guy who does not have a lack of fitness is sitting in the locker room probably enjoying that. He's probably on a 20k run, actually, knowing David Ferrer. you got him next. Um, you've got to back up, don't you? You've got to turn around, you've got to recover right, but you'll do that? Yeah, I, I do the right things. You know, I pride myself on, on being the ultimate professional out there and doing all the right preparation. And you know, It's going to get tougher. He's the number four seed here. He's, he's had an awesome year, especially in all the slams, all the big tournaments. So, uh, yeah, I've got nothing to lose. I'll go out there and have a crack. Mate, again, awesome effort. Congrats. Appreciate it. Thanks, mate.